Following the success of the wooden-hulled self unloaders Hennepin and Topeka, their owners were quite happy, but the rest of the Great Lakes community paid little attention. The true rise in the self unloader was caused by a different type of stone than was hauled by those wooden conveyor unloading vessels. It was this, limestone. And its principal use in the early 1900s was in the production of soda ash, which is a key component to the manufacture of glass. The Michigan Alkali Company, established by Captain John B. Ford in Wyandotte on the southern Detroit River, operated to provide that product to the Pittsburgh Plate Glass Company. At first, they used locally mined limestone. But as demand increased, they needed to establish a second plant and find a better source of industrial grade limestone. They did so by purchasing a large tract of land near Alpena, Michigan. The problem then became finding a way that was more efficient than the current railroads to get these huge quantities of limestone down to their processing plants. The best route was by water. Then the next problem was that the company had two plants two miles apart, each with water access. That would require two sets of shoreside unloading rigs, which would be expensive to build and operate. The solution was a clever concept developed by the Lakeshore Stone Company, the self unloading conveyor vessel. George B. Palmer, the chief engineer at Michigan Alkali, took up the task. His concept was not to convert a lake freighter, but to build one whose design from the keel up was to be a self unloader. She was named the Wyandotte. She measured 306 feet in length, 45 feet in beam, and 24 feet in depth. She could carry 3,400 tons of limestone and could unload it in just over four and one half hours. Her cargo hoppers had gates every eight feet to allow control of the cargo being dropped onto her unloading conveyors. Unlike the wooden self unloaders, the Wyandotte's unloading equipment was run by electricity rather than by steam. August 5, 1908 found her upbound for Alpena with a cargo of coal from Sandusky and on her way for her first load of limestone. Yet the demand for limestone grew and thus Michigan Alkali ordered a second self unloader to be constructed. She was launched on March 24, 1909 and named Alpena. The boat measured 374 feet in length, 47 feet in beam, and 26 feet in depth. Her cargo capacity was 5,000 tons, and her unloading equipment could spit it ashore at a rate of 900 tons per hour. That was done with the aid of a trestle-style unloading boom, which proved so efficient that the Wyandotte was later taken in and converted to the same type of boom and high angle lip belt system. Her combination of sea trials and maiden voyage took place on May 25th, and on that trip she was tested for speed and fuel burning. Upbound light she ran at an average speed of 13.58 miles per hour with her engine turning at 98 RPM. She was loaded at her namesake port to the 18 foot mark and downbound she ran at 11.54 miles per hour, all of which was slightly faster than her contract required. Her boilers consumed 10,980 pounds of coal every six hours, which gave her a coal burning rate of 1,830 pounds every hour, all of which was hand shoveled into her boilers. Of course, the need for limestone really began to grow, as it was also used in steel making. Soon the massive Pittsburgh Steel Company decided that with the limestone mines in Illinois, Pennsylvania, and Ohio rapidly being depleted, they needed high-grade stone, and they also needed their own dedicated limestone carrier. 
Lucky for them that the Michigan Limestone and Chemical Company had seen the opportunity to mine limestone in the Alpena area, and by 1912 had a plant up and running. The partnership between the two led to the construction of the largest self-unloader ever built to that point in time. She was the 423-foot Calcite, originally owned by the Calcite Transportation Company. You can see her whole story in my video, Happy Birthday Calcite. In late 1913, the Michigan Alkali Company contracted to have another self-unloader built. Launched the following year, she was named the Huron and measured 424 feet in overall length. She carried 8,000 tons of limestone and unloaded at a rate of 1,400 tons per hour by way of a 180-foot boom. Just two years later, the company took possession of another self-unloader. That was the near twin to the Huron. Her name was Econiot. And the only way that boat watchers could tell the difference between her and the Huron was the fact that she had a longer unloading boom than her older sister, 218 feet. Yet by the time the Conneaut went to work, she was already outclassed. The year before her launch, the prototype of the modern self-unloader was launched for the Limestone Transportation Company. That vessel was the 537-footer W.F. White. She survived until being scrapped in 1985. While researching this video, I came across a photo from the Ralph Roberts collection of the Alpina in Dry Dock. Attached was a note that simply said, Look very closely. And when you do, you see this in the background. It's the Edmund Fitzgerald.